Welcome back to L'Amore La Musique. I'm a little bit late this year for my Best of Beauty 2022, but as you can probably tell from my background, we've been in transition a little bit. We are temporarily back in Chicago, but we will be moving on again in about a month or so. So this is probably the only video you're gonna see me film here for the foreseeable future, but it's been an interesting year. We were in Lexington, Kentucky for the whole year. My husband was working for a startup that um, was not really very successful, which is why we're now back here and transitioning on to something else. But through it all, I have been dedicated to L'Amour. I put out uh, quite a bit of content in 2022 and I was very proud of that. So I'm sorry that things have been a little bit quiet here around YouTube, but between moves and no childcare, most of my attention does go to Patreon and working on my website and some projects I have going on there. But I'll continue to try and get as many uploads here to YouTube as I can. But if you're wanting more, you can always come to patreon.com slash l'amore la musique and there are different tiers for any kind of content that you might be interested in. Okay, so for today, you will have to bear with me because I have accumulated most of the products that I'm going to talk about, but because of the move, there were just a couple things that I wasn't able to locate to actually, you know, have here to show you, in which case I'll just insert a picture. I'll make sure to list and link everything down below and let you know when I'm I have discount codes because I do think I have some codes for a handful of the things I'm going to talk about today. I'll also include a playlist down below of all of my past annual eco beauty and lifestyle favorites that I've been doing since 2014. And the only other little note is that I'm going to mention a little bit of makeup, but because I did a whole video dedicated to all the makeup that I loved and hated in 2022, it's not going to be a big focus in this video. I just want to mention, and it's going to be a re reiteration of things that I mentioned in um, the makeup video, uh, but I, do, I did pull a couple things to talk about. So the focus is really going to be on skincare, some other miscellaneous beauty products, and then lifestyle. So let's start with skincare. For reference, if you are new here, my skin is um, normal to sensitive. It's not really dry or dehydrated except during seasonal transitions, but I can have sensitivity to products that are too strong. So I just have a very minimal supportive skincare philosophy. Uh, first favorite, and this is actually an empty, the Air Perez Ginkgo Micellar Water. I use this for eye makeup removal and I have another bottle already. I'm also currently trying the 12 Beauty Dara's Water product, which is in a pump. I like that as well, although I still think that I prefer the Air Perez Micellar Water a little bit. So I love this because it does not sting at all. Before this, I was using the Eminence Eye Makeup Remover, which I did not like at all. It would definitely be a disappointing product, uh, but yeah, this is really good. I get it on Beauty Heroes and um, I just, it's easy to use. It's very effective and it's a mainstay in my evening makeup routine to take off eye and lip makeup. Another standout this year, maybe I've talked about this before, the Inlight Floral Tonic. This is, it's obviously not a spray toner, but I use this every single night. So you just kind of deposit it like this, either on a cotton round or directly into your hand. And I use this every single night to work balm into my face. That's just my PM skincare routine. It works really well. And this is just so simple, but so perfect. It's probably my third bottle of it and I'll continue to repurchase it in perpetuity. Infiori Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret. This was probably my favorite serum type of product. I mean, I don't know what category we would really consider the Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret. It's sort of um, a balm serum hybrid. This is actually a brand new one from my holiday order, but I'm due to crack it open. So I absolutely love this. I, if we're gonna consider it a serum product, I did have another favorite serum as well from Earthwise. But this is like, if I'm traveling, which I, you know, I for some reason, I guess we have done a fair amount of some travel this year. Uh, this is like a one and done type of product. I could just bring this and it would be the only product I would need for my skin. It's that good. The scent is quintessential in Fiore, but I don't find it too strong at all. I love this brand. I have for years and years. And this and the newly launched Velite are very, very nice introductions to the brand because the packaging is so portable. And the price point I think is 
it's a good value for what for what you get and how potent and effective and just experientially wonderful those products are. Earthwise Ambrosia du Serato. I'm sitting down to film this after the news has already been released that this brand is closing their doors. It's it's very difficult in the entire time that I've been in green beauty, making content, I don't think that a brand closure has hit people as hard as this one. Many people have loved and relied on Ava's products for many years, and I think people are a little panicked about, about what they're gonna replace these products with. I've just never seen such brokenheartedness really over a brand closure, but People need to move on and do other things in life. Also a lot of commentary we could make about how the social media and um, you know, online shopping platform, big tech, all of that makes life for herbalists or people in the alternative fields um, very challenging. So I don't think that that's something that should be overlooked when we look at why such an incredible brand has decided to close its doors. My pick, um, probably favorite product from the entire brand, I've already bought several backups, is Ambrosia du Serato Liquid Moisturizer. This is a water-based aloe serum. I use it every single morning. This is an empty as well. Um, I think I have two or three bottles as backups and there will never be another Ambrosia du Serato. It's a minimal ingredient list. My skin loves it. It pairs so beautifully with my favorite face oil of the year, which is Lepar Smooth Operator Unfolding Face Balsam. Ambrosia du Serato, it's just, it's going to be tough to find something that I love as much as this. I have been getting questions about what to replace some of the Earthwise products with now that they're no longer going to be available. I've been recommending people check out the Blissoma. They're sort of like um, a water-based moisturizer serum type of product. I think there's two or three in the line. Aura is one that I currently have and like. It's not exactly the same, but that's sort of the direction that I'm heading because I do not like hyaluronic acid. I don't like acids. I don't like, um, this actually does have a bit of vitamin C in it, but it was an exception that I was willing to make because I just love the product so, so much. I loved pairing that, like I said, with the Lapar Smooth Operator. Favorite face oil of the year. It smells like coffee and the combination of the citrus and the coffee just made my entire morning. This is my second bottle of this. I will continue to repurchase this. It's essential oil free as are the other two oils in the Kairos collection. Um, just incredible. I, I love this product so much. It actually matches the color of my shirt a little bit. I think if you have dry or more mature skin, this would be really nice because it is quite emollient. So I'm pretty judicious with it, but it just, my skin loves it. And I love everything about how it wakes my skin up in the morning. That was my go-to routine pretty much all year in the morning. And the reason why, and I should have said this maybe at the outset, is that for all, I guess I would consider all of 2022, I was postpartum, depending on how long you consider postpartum to last. I had my second baby in October of 2021. So I was, you know, in the throes of postpartum motherhood for most of the year. And I was avoiding most essential oils for a lot of that time. And both of those, these products are essential oil free, which I loved. Now, I believe this product is essential oil free as well, though I would have to double check. This is the Gressa Siberian Pineapple Pressed Serum. This quickly became a favorite skincare product of mine. Along with the Serum Serret from Infiore, it's another one that I rely on a lot if we're going out of town or traveling. I mean, I use it in my day-to-day -day life as well, but it's I can use this AM or PM. I love that flexibility with it. And I would say that this is a particularly nice balm pressed serum product if you are normal or even potentially oily because it doesn't have the same... Ugh, like occlusive or very heavy feeling that a lot of balms can feel like. It's just it's just a really nice product if you want the balm experience but you don't want something that's too too heavy. Um, it smells absolutely incredible. It's uh, far and away my favorite skincare product that Gressa does. I tend to prefer her makeup to the skincare but wow is that product incredible and I will repurchase it. I do have a 20% off code L'Amour off all Gressa skincare and makeup. The last thing I'll say about this is that it is sort of everything I wanted that Maya Chia pressed serum product to be. I don't know how many of you remember the Maya Chia pressed serum. I had really high hopes and I liked the 
the concept behind it, but that product really fell short for me. And this is what I would have wanted out of something labeled a pressed serum. And this is labeled a pressed serum and I do think it delivers and is gorgeous. Okay, my favorite mask of the year, I can't find, I don't know where it is, it's somewhere in a box, uh, but I did do a standalone review of it, which I'll direct you to, and it's the Blue Alchemy AHA and BHA Superfruit mask that might not be the full official name but basically it was the new release from blue alchemy this year it was featured in a um, beauty heroes box i think in september and i just love that product the experience how gentle it is how effective it is um, it's like a once a month type of product for me but i truly love that product it might be my favorite easy exfoliating mask of all time it's definitely up there with iuna essence for example which is that three-in-one peel gommage product um, more recently i've been trying a similar type of quick exfoliating mask from marie veronique it's like the probiotic mask i got it as a gift with purchase and i like it too but it reminded me how much the blue alchemy aha mask really stood out to me and you know, a very expertly, beautifully crafted, enzymatic chemical exfoliant like that, those are hard to do in a way that's so gentle. So if you are sensitive at all, or you tend to react to exfoliating products, I really recommend checking out the Blue Alchemy one because it's, it's a stunner. Another brand that I talked about this year in a video I did on Patreon, I think it was my eight favorite products from my eight favorite skincare brands. I mentioned an honorable mention brand and the name of the brand is Bio Herbology. I learned about this from my acupuncturist. She carries these products in her office and uses them herself. Um, they're formulated from a Chinese medicine perspective. I have the non-linear serum, which is basically an oil, the balancing skin toner, and then I have the Medi Pearl product too, which is a sort of leave-on treatment product. And these are incredible. I mean, they're like medicine for the skin. So you have to be, if you're used to taking Chinese herbs or you've worked with an acupuncturist, then you would probably really align with this brand but she utilizes spagyrix and different preparations of astragalus and she's very focused on the health of our telomeres and how that impacts skin aging and whatnot so i love these products i probably use these this is a nighttime thing for me i can use it in the morning but it's a little heavy for morning uh but i interchange like so one night i'll do Siberian pineapple with some toner. The next night I'll do this. Uh, so yeah, really incredible brand. This was another favorite of the year, the Le Prunier Plump Screen. I would say now this is probably the best eco SPF on the market as far as ease of use, uh, lay ability to layer with other products without pilling, uh, effectiveness, everything about the user experience is really good. Um, you know, I really like the Blissoma Photonic, but this is a bit of a different finish. That one is sort of um, almost like a matte tightening type of feeling. And this is just a neutral, like neutral satin type of finish. And it's just so easy to use. And I feel like for me, with normal sensitive skin, it really imparts sort of the perfect canvas, uh, can function as a primer, although I have another product that I prefer for makeup priming. Really, really wonderful product. And I would, I think I bought a tube of this for my mom. She used it when she was visiting and really liked it. So I don't wear SPF every day, but in the summertime or when it's needed, I think that this is a great one. Also in the skincare category, I made time for facial reflexology this year. I had treated myself to this beautiful compact and I have the noise skincare detector. I have some other detectors as well that this is sort of my favorite to just lie down on the couch at night after the kids are asleep. This is a Paul and Joe mirror from Beauty Habit. I don't think they have this exact one anymore, but I just thought it was gorgeous. And I love this detector. I follow the Jackie Van Ruler and Noi skincare formulas. They're really good. And then I also got into face taping this year. I did a whole video on Patreon about face taping. And um, I like it. I don't have the time to do it as much as I would like, but I do think it's really effective. The Iuna Terra Fluida mask is in line with that whole lymphatic drainage, mimicking the effect of applying kinesiology tape to the face and neck. So I'm also, it, that was too late in the game to be considered a 2022 favorite. I really ought to do 
uh, an early 2023 favorites because there have been so many incredible products that have come out. The Grusic Essentialist Concealer, the Infiore Essences, the Reformulation of Velite, Terra Fluida. I, there's just been so much, but they're, those are really 2023 favorites and not 2022. Okay, let's do a quick little spin through makeup. Like I said, I did this whole long makeup crit video on all the makeup I loved and hated in 2022 as it was the year of makeup for me. Being postpartum and not using a lot of skincare, Manasi 7 was really the highlight of my makeup year. I still intend to do a full Manasi brand review. I just have not had the time. Um, but some standouts for me are the Earth and Clay quad. This has totally changed how I feel about my eyebrows. Um, the mascara, I'm due to get a replacement. This is my go-to, absolutely love product. I also really like the Fit Glow Lash Primer with this a lot. And then it's impossible for me, I, I love so many of the color pots, it's honestly impossible to choose favorites. Um, a True Skin, this one is probably my most used. It was the first one I got and I still love it. This is Cicero, it's really perfect for olive toned uh, women who love just that very very beautiful sculpted cool almost purple look on the cheeks it's so good mangosteen also really good for winter color types or olive skin tones kobicha mangala gazania great if you're warm i mean there, i could just sit here all day and talk about the colors and uh, the texture of these is incredible. I'm gonna be depotting parts of all of my pots and creating uh, little mini palettes with Artist Kit Co. stuff. That's a project that I have upcoming and I'm very excited about. But yes, Manasi 7 and my forays into them will continue. I'm just actually a few colors shy of owning all of them. So I think it's bound to happen. And at that point, I think we'll be able to do a couple of videos from that, a full brand review, a swatch video would have to be separate from the full brand review. So there's just, there's a lot there and it's just an incredible brand that, that really changed my life in 2022. I mean, what can I say? The other brand that I really just, I, I don't know, it, it's, this brand makes me so happy to use. It makes me happy to support. I love the products. It's work, okay? It's not super straightforward and easy to use like off the rack the way clean at sephora is but to me it's worth it and that brand is haute cosmetics out of canada um, in particular the standouts for me were the dewy hdd i have two shades macadamia and vanilla the coconut cream from haute is probably my favorite makeup primer i've ever used so if you use kind of a thicker cream foundation like the care weiss and you want a primer this is incredible or it can be part of your skincare routine if you want to replace them like if you're looking for a really incredible moisturizer i just absolutely love this um, my forays are continuing. I'm, I already have another cart going for another order. Uh, I love a lip gloss that I have. I'm still playing around with little different color selections. Um, her cacao saffron body butter. I, I just, the, the brand makes me feel incredible to use. Uh, she's the only brand I've come across that has the quality that I'm looking for, but she doesn't formulate with titanium dioxide. She does not formulate with mica. Um, she does not formulate with nanoparticulates. Uh, all of these kinds of things that's like next level beyond green beauty, right? So I love that. Gressa Eye Tints also deserve a shout out in this video. Uh, they're my favorite makeup product that she does. I pulled a couple, but I love prints. You can now buy this shade individually. It was part of the limited edition holiday set. Uh, Charbonne, I've been testing this in my brows and I have to say I love it. I wanna do a full face of Gressa tutorial soon. Um, and then Butter Rum, such a good all over the lid color. Uh, I thought it would be too warm on me, but it's really amazing. These brushes from Gressa are so good. The Air Focus brushes, I have two of each, the big face brush and then the minis as well. The mini is just so, I loved it so much. I just bought a second one, picking up a few other shades of The Essentialist. Uh, I don't know, it's just, I've never, I love this brush. It's like one of my favorite makeup brushes of all time. It's just so perfect for buffing in concealer, doing touch-ups. Um, you could use this even to blur out lip color. I mean, it's incredible. And then obviously this, I, the face brush is so good. You can buff in foundation or I love it, especially for cream, cream color deposit on the cheeks. And then to round out makeup, 
Other brushes that I've loved this year, the Antonym brushes, you can get these on Beauty Heroes. The two I use the most are the number 10, which is like a blending brush, and the Angled brush, which is what I use with the Manasi Brow Powder to fill in my brows pretty much every day. I mean, if I need something quicker, I'll still go for like a brow pencil, but this is my favorite. And then the Sonia G Eye Fusion brushes, Oh, these are so good. I mean, they're they're like a luxe indulgence. I want some of the face fusion brushes now. You know, if you, for example, use the Manasi cream eye colors, using these eye fusion brushes with it just really, I mean, it elevates the experience even more. It just, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> it's just such a true pleasure. I just feel like the artistic, creative potential of makeup is something I'm just starting to really get into. I mean, I guess I've always loved makeup, but it's been not even really utilitarian, but I'm just kind of going to another place with it. I don't know, just the products and the brushes, it all feels really special and um, I love it. All right, now let's talk about the kind of miscellaneous catch-all other beauty. So there's some hair care, a little bit of body care, mostly hair care. The Mukti shampoo and conditioner, incredible. Um, this one is actually empty, the shampoo. There's a bit of the conditioner and then I have backups already waiting to go. My husband, Kave, really likes these too, so we both use them. Um, I just, I love the way they smell. They're gentle, but also really work. Um, they're just kind of perfect. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of the bathing culture shampoo and conditioner that just came in the Beauty Heroes box. I much prefer this. Only thing I would say is the conditioner, if you have dry ends, the conditioner is probably not gonna be enough and you may have to do some hair mask or layer other conditioners on top, but I love that set. Um, the other shampoo and conditioner I really fell in love with this year are the Good Juju bars. First time I've really loved a shampoo bar. I've tried, you know, a fair amount over the years, but these are just really good. Um, I realize these look kind of gross in here, but these are the bars that I am working on. They're in a plastic bag because these are so good to travel with. This is the conditioner bar and this is the shampoo and they just work really well without stripping, without drying. They're easy to use. Um, my hair really likes them. So interchanging the Mukti with the Good Juju really worked for me this year. Probably my favorite styling product of the year. I mean, I don't style my hair anymore. I'm sure you can tell. Before I had kids, I was always doing like big loose waves and I used, you know, different hairsprays. I had the Orbe spray, Intelligent Nutrients, the Reverie hair milk. I used a lot more products and I just do not now. I'm wash and wear. I'll use a bit of Earthwise Nap in the Meadow through the ends and uh, that's kind of it. But I do love the Inner Sense I Create Shine Glossing Serum. This came in a Beauty Heroes box this year and I mean, I can use like two drops on like second or third day hair uh, and it's perfect, but you can go overboard with it quickly. And if your hair is prone to looking greasy, you need to be, you know, careful. I just, I love the way it smells. It reminds me of, this is not disparaging. It's actually very positive. It reminds me of like a drugstore type of product I may have used when I was in college or something, but I don't know, just it smells so good. I, I really like the way it makes my hair smell. That's a huge part of it. Um, and it does add gloss and shine, uh, but you have to be careful with it, not too much. The other product I really like but could not find is the Nature of Things Hair. It's actually a hair and body scrub, but that was a great postpartum product for me because when I had no time to do anything, but I really felt like my scalp needed some clarifying, you know, I was going through postpartum hair loss and regrowth and all of that. Um, that scrub was really, really helpful for me. And then you can also do, use it on your body. Just a really nice, easy indulgence type of product. So if you're a new mom, I think that's a really nice product to pull out if you have it or gift to somebody. And then a couple of body care things, uh, one I have and one I don't. This is actually an empty, the ingredients deodorant spray and also the ingredients nasal spray. I go through many of the nasal sprays. I buy two or three at a time. I just, I most mornings I'll do like a quick spritz of that in both nostrils. It's like a quick and easy version of a neti pot without doing a full neti pot, especially nice in the fall and winter when your sinuses are a little dry waking up. I just love that product. It's 100% isotonic seawater and I do a spritz and then blow my nose and it's just become part of my morning routine. The deodorant spray, I love this stuff. It's 
sugarcane alcohol, lavender hydrosol, glycerin, saccharomyces ferment, and a little bit of lavender essential oil. I've been using this all year and I freaking love it. We used up this whole thing, it's lasted a year. I bought another one immediately and the reason it's so incredible is that A, it works, B, it doesn't deposit any gummy or powdery residue on my clothes, which so many eco deodorants do. So this is a huge win for me. It's just such a great staple brand. I One of my favorite Beauty Heroes discoveries probably of all time, and I'm probably alone in that because it's very unassuming and kind of utilitarian, but wow, is their stuff good. And then last to mention in this category, I really like this brand, Paloroma. Beauty Heroes introduced uh, their products to me this year. They're like a mother and baby brand that they carry, and they sent me like a little package of their stuff when my second baby was, I don't know, four or five months old. And we've used all of it and really like it. This is the daily cream for face and body. I love this again for travel because it's not in glass. It's a very travel friendly thing and you can use this on your body, on your hands. I also have the pump of their hand lotion. It's a little bit richer. I keep that in the kitchen for after I'm doing dishes. Uh, I've gone through the hand soap. I just really, uh, the products are great. Like they're very simple, totally unscented cute branding, good packaging design. Um, and so I'm gonna continue to repurchase their stuff uh, cause I really like it. Okay, last, let's finish out this video with some lifestyle things that I was into this year that uh, inspired me, educated me, um, have brought me in new research directions, all of that. Uh, so the number one person, I think I recommended her last year as well. I just think that everybody should be paying attention to the larger social problems, social conversation around technology and the role of technology in our lives, um, particularly how it has infiltrated the education space. I mean, the technology issue goes so far beyond education. It goes into workforce development, um, health interventions, our day-to-day -day lives, consumerism, I mean like literally everything. And the number one person I think people should be reading, listening to, engaging with, paying attention to is Alison McDowell. She's an independent researcher out of Philadelphia. She's been blogging uh, in the education field for my, many years, I think 2013, 14, maybe even before that. I think it can be a little hard to get up to speed with a lot of the things she talks about as far as cybernetics, machine learning, um, tokenized labor, blockchain, all of this stuff, but it's just so, it's these topics are so important and no one is talking about them. Uh, we're all so wrapped up in Instagram. I am not on TikTok and never will be, but all of these things to distract people from having broader social conversations about the kind of lives that we wanna live and the role technology should have in that. So that's the number one thing, just in a broad sense that I will continue to talk about and try and get people to pay attention to. As far as, you know, supplement type of things, uh, there were, I mean, I spent a lot of time researching and trying different supplements this year. And I've done, I did a couple of videos on Patreon. Like I did a pro metabolic, what I eat in a day when I was kind of experimenting with that. I did several videos on supplements. So those are all in the Patreon archive, just $7 a month if you wanna go check those out. Um, but probably I would have to say the number one thing, well, there were kind of two, two main things that made a really big difference for me. And the first was Shilajit. I started taking Shilajit when I was maybe two or three months postpartum. And I honestly think it made a huge difference in my postpartum blood rebuilding, nourishing. Um, in Chinese medicine, anything that's like black and richly colored like that, from black sesame to blackberries to beets, liver, all of that is just essential for postpartum mothers. I just really went hard on the MitoLife Panacea and it, it just helped so much. I've been taking a break from supplements the last couple months. I've been doing constitutional homeopathy, which I'll talk about briefly at the end. But um, yeah, I think I still have a 20% off discount code for MitoLife Panacea. And I think it's a really good product. I mean, there's a lot of Shilajit's on the market. I also have the Tonic Treasures liquid, but for ease of use and how, how I felt on this, I would still recommend the MitoLife Panacea. I also got really into copper and different sort of mineral balancing, copper, zinc, all of that over the summer. And again, I think there's Patreon content on that. Also, as far as supplements, I love the 
Chinese herbal focused shop Shen Blossom. Um, I've been slowly buying products. Every time they have a sale, I pick up new things to try, but like I have their tooth powders, which I really like, the throat sprays. I recently got the miso, some different spices, turmeric tincture, the gobo root oil. I don't know, I just, I want the entire website. So I've been loving Shen Blossom stuff this year. And then kind of parallel because the person that runs Shen Blossom is also the US distributor for this EMF um, mitigating technology called Blue Shield. I have, we have a plug-in for the home and then I also this year during Black Friday got one of the portables. This is, I think it's called the T3, T1. And I love this product. I think I showed it and talked about it in the holiday shopping hall again on Patreon. Uh, but yeah, you just take this with you where you go. It's not a blocking device. I don't like all of the rhetoric around blocking EMFs, you know, like wearing certain clothing or painting your walls. Like I don't, I don't believe that's a healthy approach to dealing with this, but this is a different idea. It emits a different kind of frequency that the body prefers to all the non-native EMFs. So I don't know, it just seems more harmonious to me and I feel good, you know, taking this with me when we travel on airplanes and hotels. I'm just going out to do errands and, you know, we're in Chicago right now. There's I don't know, there's also been a huge uptick in cell tower deployment from what I've seen. So it's not something I freak out about, but I do like having little tools like that to just help, help the body relax a bit, right? So I have continued my sourdough journey um, this year. Admittedly, I don't do a ton of sourdough baking, but I have kept my starter really alive and vibrant this year. I feed it every single day. I do end up discarding quite a bit, but some of my favorite resources this year were the Sourdough Baking with Kids book by Natalia Sayanova. And then the, this book is relatively new in my life, but I've been following Maurizio Leo on social, on YouTube, on his blog, um, and I just picked up his book, The Perfect Loaf. I'm currently feeding my starter according to his proportions, his hydration proportions and timetable. And I'm going to be attempting some of his beginner sourdough loaves soon, I hope. Um, also in the cooking realm, my favorite cookbook from the year was Bobby at Home. I talk about this book all the time because I've probably cooked three quarters of the recipes from it at this point. I love Bobby Flay. We watch Be Bobby Flay as a family all the time. I just think he's a total genius and his recipes are amazing. So if I were to recommend one cookbook of the year, at least the one that we have loved, it's Bobby at Home. Um, I do have an Amazon shop front with these books linked and like a whole bunch of other cookbooks, other books, homewares, kid stuff toys, kids books, all of that if you want to go check it out. Also in the food realm, I have to give a shout out to some of my favorite vendors. Again, a whole video on Patreon on this, my favorite online nourishing food companies. Miller's Biofarm, I love for raw milk. I order from them about twice a month. Seven Sons, I've been getting my meat from them for years, probably four or five years at this point and continue to Sea to table, I get seafood, shrimp from them, scallops, so good. Organic bread of heaven for sourdough bread if you don't have time to bake your own. They also have a lot of really fun treats like cinnamon buns and whatnot for kids. Chafin orchards for citrus. We've been just, every time we finish a box of the mandarins, we order another one. They're incredible, especially because I don't think the mandarins at the grocery store have been that good this season. Chafin orchards comes from Northern California and they're grown in this like, very mineral rich volcanic ash soil and they're just they're so good um i recently decided to try patagonia provisions for tinned uh, mussels and sardines and they also do like venison jerky and bison jerky yes. i also invested in linen linen clothing but really linen bed sheets this year and they were such a game changer linen bed sheets are such a leveling up experience i mean yes they're expensive there are more affordable ones the i think the brand is casabella at target uh, really good. I have those on my four-year-old's bed and they're a really good quality. On our main bed, we have a set from Bed Threads, which I really like. I like them. They're very nice. I don't like that that brand has done a Kardashian collaboration. When brands do that, it's often my indication that um, I would like to move on because 
supporting that kind of thing is not something that I'm interested in. Um, but Bed Threads is a nice brand. I would like to check out the brand Magic Linen and then Quince, which is a sort of sustainable clothing company. They do a lot of affordable cashmere and linen. Um, I think they also have linen bed sheets through Quince as well. Koyuchi also has linen, but I personally think their stuff is quite overpriced. Last thing to end on, quite a profound thing, is that I've gone, continued to go deeper into uh, my explorations of homeopathy. Homeopathy is basically a complete system of medicine that utilizes all kinds of different source material from plants, from animals, insects, like so many things to create remedies. These little vials, you see them at the health food store, you can treat almost anything yourself. I mean, there's a, an immense value in working with a professional homeopath, but I've really been taken with the work of Joette Calabrese, who some of you probably know. She practices something called practical homeopathy, which is different from classical homeopathy. So much to say there. I'm actually doing another podcast episode this month on constitutional homeopathy, which you do have to work with someone with for. But if you want to start kind of lessening your reliance on a doctor's office, mainstream medical system, over-the-counter drugs, or prescription drugs, um, there's a lot of resources out there to basically teach yourself how to treat a lot of acute things at home. Colds, flus, uh, burns, cuts, scrapes, bites, um, accidents, mood, emotional things. I mean, it's it's really just endless. So I've been investing in different kits, 200C kit, cell salts, 30C kit, other remedies I keep a running list of that I would like to have on hand. It is a bit of an investment, but compared to other medicines and medical treatments, incredibly affordable and egalitarian. And you just have to have the, I guess, interest and motivation to learn. And it is very intellectually stimulating. I think that that's it's why it's a good fit for me. You know, I'm full time with my kids. And so having something that still is very intellectual um, and also in the realm of health and wellness and like real healing, homeopathy will get to the root of an issue. It's not a palliative. It's not a Band-Aid the way Tylenol or ibuprofen is. It actually supports the body through resolving uh, whatever issue it's dealing with. So I don't know, it just really inspires me um, to have a different approach than I was raised with and most people get to experience. And I think it's never too late to try and do something different um, to take care of yourself, your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, your community. Yeah, I highly recommend Joette Calabrese. I also, uh, the very first homeopath that I ever worked with and still uh, oversees the homeoprophylaxis that I do with my kids is Scylla Whatcott at Real Immunity. Another really great resource, but there's so many out there, really good homeopathic resources. Those are just two of my favorites. On that note, I want to close out on just thanking you all for being here, uh, however long you've been here, watching my content, to all of you who support me on Patreon, I'm so grateful. Uh, thank you for giving me a platform to just keep doing what I love to do, which is to share and learn from other like-minded people. Thank you guys so, so much. Uh, LamoreLaMusic.com is my website. You can find wherever you need to go from there, Patreon, playlists, podcast, which is not dead. I still do my podcast, but it's just been on Patreon for the last year. Probably the next time I see you, I might be in our new location, which I'm not saying until we're actually there because it had seemed like we were going to be moving to Southern California, which did not end up materializing. I'm actually extremely grateful that that did not happen, but we're going somewhere different now. And when we get there, I'll let you know. I hope 2023 is off to a great start for all of you and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Thank you.